were working on an implicit differentiation, and then I mentioned that weird curve, the full name of Descartes. Um, so it's like a little, I don't know how to describe it, not a spiral, like a loop. Okay, so um, basically it looks like um, something like this. Okay, so that's in your notes in that previous section. Do you guys remember that? Okay, and the reason this is a special curve um, and the reason that Descartes was so like interested in it um, is because it has a horizontal and a vertical tangent um, at zero. So notice how this is like the bottom of that, the curve that goes right here. Right, so the slope is equal to zero there. Um, but if you look at this portion of the curve, the slope is also undefined right there. Okay, so it has a slope that's equal to zero and it's also undefined at zero. So it's kind of cool, okay? Um, so it says find the derivative of the full name of Descartes. So this is a little tricky because it's not always nice numbers, but we're going to go ahead and do it. So we have 3x squared plus 3y squared. And since we're taking the derivative of a y term, we write dy over dx, so implicit differentiation, equals, and then we're going to have 3x times dy over dx plus 3 times y. So I broke this up with the product rule, 3x and y. So we want to get all the dy over dx's on one side. So I told you yesterday that you're going to be pretty good at doing this. Like you're going to get used to pulling all the dy over dx's on one side and everything else on the other side. And eventually you're not going to have to write out like this middle term where we have both of the dy over dx terms. Like see how I'm writing dy over dx twice. And then I'm going to subtract that 3x squared over. So I have 3y minus 3x squared. Now it doesn't matter which side you have the dy over dx's on either. So eventually you'll be able to do this step where you just kind of pull out the dy over dx in that same step. Let's see. So our answer is going to be dy over dx equals 3y minus x squared over 3y squared minus 3x. Oops, 3x squared. All right, so what do we notice that we probably should do? Yeah, they all have that 3, right? So we're going to pull out the 3 and then reduce out. So we're dividing all those terms by 3. So it's kind of like we had a 3 on the outside of parentheses and a 3 on the outside of the parentheses, right? So when we do that, we get um, y minus x squared over y squared minus x. Okay, so it says find the equation of the tangent line at 1.5 comma 1.5. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and find dy over dx at 1.5 comma 1.5. So we have 1.5 minus 1.5 squared all over 1.5 squared minus 1.5. So a lot of you guys might be like pulling out your calculators and trying to figure out what this is, but these are like tricks you pick up along the way. We just talked about something like this. We talked about something that was like, 7 minus 2 over 2 minus 7, kind of that same idea. Do we know what 1.5 minus 1.5 squared over 1.5 squared minus 1.5 should be? Negative 1. Negative 1. Do you guys get that? Because it's like the opposite on the top and the bottom. So this all works out to be negative 1. So our equation of our tangent line then is 1, or sorry, y minus 1.5 equals negative 1 times x minus 1.5. So then part C, so it says at what point or points in the first quadrant is the line, tangent line horizontal? Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So yesterday you guys, guys had something much nicer than this. But looking at this one, when we talk about the tangent line as horizontal, our slope was y minus x squared over y squared minus x. Good luck, Grace. So our tangent line is horizontal when y, y minus x squared is equal to 0. Okay, that's because we're setting our dy over dx equal to 0. So we're looking at the numerator and setting it equal to 0. Does that make sense? Okay, so previously when we did this yesterday, it was always like x minus 2 equals 0. And we're like, oh, x equals 2, right? But you guys see the issue here? So we have two variables. So we have y equals x squared. Okay, and that happens sometimes, especially on the AP test. They definitely ask these like trickier questions. But we're still saying at what points in the first quadrant is this horizontal. We still need to find these points. 
So what are your ideas? What should we do? Any guesses? We know that if we have two variables, x and y, we need two equations. We only have one equation. We have y is equal to x squared. How can I use something else to help me? The what? The first quadrant? Not really. I mean, it is going to be in the first quadrant in the end, but at what point are the first quadrant we come out? Yeah. So let's go back and look at the original. Our original equation was x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. Okay, now do you have any ideas? <laughs> yeah, you're like going to combine them, right? You have two equations. I have x and y. So we're going to take this y equals x squared, and we're going to replace all of our y terms with x squared. So we end up getting x cubed plus x to the sixth equals 3x cubed. Okay, and we can solve for this. So I'm going to take my x to the sixth, and when I subtract that 3x cubed over, I have 1x cubed minus 3x cubed. So I get minus 2x cubed equals 0. I pull out the GCF of x cubed. So I get x equals 0. How about the other one? Can you guys do that in your head? Add the 2 over. Take the 2 root. The 2 root of 2, right? Isn't that fun? These are lovely numbers, aren't they? And now we have a choice. So we can go back here and find y. Or we can go back here and find y. Which one do we want to use? The y equals x squared. It's much easier, right? So if I use y equals x squared and I plug in um, x equals 0, I get y equals 0. So that's the point 0, 0, which I just kind of talked about. I said that's where our tangent line is horizontal, right, at 0, 0. But what about the other one? So if I have y equals x squared, and I plug in the cube root of 2, the cube root of 2 squared, I can write this a couple different ways. So I could do 2 to the 2 thirds. I could leave it like that, too, like the cube root of 2 squared. That's fine. I could do 2 to the 2 thirds. Or I could even write it as the cube root of what number? 4, right? Because the 2 squared can go on the inside. I don't have to bring the squared on the outside, it can go inside as well. Does that make sense? Okay, so that point is going to be the cube root of 2 comma the cube root of 4. All right, so let's look at our picture. So I'll go back to the actual picture from yesterday. It's right here. So it's saying, where's our tangent line horizontal? So we had two places. We had right here, and then we also have somewhere around there. Okay, that's the number that we just found. That's that cube root of 2 comma cube root of 4. Okay, good so far? All right, so the last question, so it says, oh, I guess number two, I guess that was the last one. So number two, so it says find dy over dx at the specified point and then write the equation of the tangent line at the point. So you guys had a lot of practice with this. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to do 2x plus 2y dy over dx equals zero. And since we have a point, I would just plug it in. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 plus 2 times the square root of 5, dy over dx, equals 0. So if I isolate my dy over dx, I have to take this 2 times 2 first. I have to get rid of that first. So the 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to subtract it over to the right-hand side. And then I'm going to divide by that 2 root 5. So if I divide by 2 on the top and bottom, I get negative 2 over root 5. And you can leave it like that. We don't care about square roots in the denominator and calculus. If you want to write it as negative 2 root 5 over 5 and rationalize, you can. But I would just leave it. Okay, and that's the slope. That's the slope at that point. So if I wanted to write the equation of the tangent line, I use 2 comma root 5 as my point, right? All right, so how about a harder one? So you guys go ahead and try this. So write the derivative and then plug in the points for the point. Okay, 
okay, you should be getting to the point where you get something strange. Do you guys see that there's something strange happening here? All right, so as I plug in pi over 2 and 0, I get cosine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0 dy over dx equals 0. Okay, think about your unit circle. What's the cosine of pi over 2? Let's start there. Cosine of pi over 2 is, no, pi over 4, pi over 2, yeah. Zero, right? Because we're talking about the unit circle, so we're talking about right here. That's the point zero comma one, right? What about sine of zero? Zero. So zero minus zero equals zero. Okay, so this is something strange. Something strange happened. Do we agree? <laughs> so that's when I would go back and I would look here, and I would maybe solve for y. Okay, so it's a quick a quick tr um, check to solve for y. So I'm going to do cosine of x equals sine of y dy over dx, and I get dy over dx equals cosine of x over sine of y. Oh, I guess this doesn't really help me because I get 0 over 0 still, right? So what do you think we write for 0 over 0? Yeah, so I would write undefined. So there's a couple different things that can happen there. You could have a vertical slope, right, a vertical line, or you could have like a corner or a cusp or something happening. Okay, so we can graph that and see what happens, but um, maybe I'll try that later. All right, so number three. So it says um, find dy over dx using implicit differentiation. So go ahead and do that first step. So you should get something pretty big. So 5y to the 4th dy over dx plus x squared times 3y squared dy over dx plus 2xy cubed equals derivative of 1 is 0, and then plus the, uh, the product rule for the second part. So x to the 4th dy over dx plus 4x cubed times y. Did you guys get that? Okay. And now we want to get all the dy over dx terms on one side and everything that's not a dy over dx on the other side. So let's say I have my 5y to the 4th dy over dx. And I'm going to subtract out the x to the 4th dy over dx. Oh, I have one more, don't I? Plus, you see how this is all kind of together, x squared, 3y squared, dy over dx. So I'm going to write that as 3x squared, y squared, dy over dx. Okay, and then I have my 4x cubed y still on the right side. And you guys see what's going to join it on the right side? So I'm going to subtract out the 2xy cubed. Okay, can you do the next step in one step? There's two steps left, but we're going to do it in one. So we would then pull out the dy over dx, and we'd have inside parentheses a bunch of stuff, right? What would be inside the parentheses? 5y to the 4th minus x to the fourth, plus 3x squared y squared, right? Does that make sense? So when I pull that out, I'm just going to go ahead and divide it over in one step. So I'm like, oh, that whole parenthesis on the left-hand side would have been 5y to the fourth, minus x to the fourth, plus 3x squared y squared. Okay, and that's our derivative. So you can look to see if there's anything you can pull out. So it looks like maybe an x, but we're missing that x and the 5y to the fourth. So we can't pull anything out, right? There's no like x's or y's or numbers in common to everything. So we leave it. Still good? All right, go ahead and try to find the derivative of this one. Try the next two, actually. This one might have been on your homework, actually, now that I think about it. These next two, I think both were. Check your work. So you should have cosine of x 
minus sine of y dy over dx equals sine of x, and then the derivative of cosine of y is negative sine of y dy over dx plus derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and then cosine of y. Did you guys get that for the first step? All right, perfect. All right, so as I get everything on one side, I'm going to have sine of x sine of y dy over dx minus sine of y dy over dx equals, and I'm going to have cosine of x cosine of y, and then minus cosine of x. Did you guys have something like that? It doesn't matter which side you got it on. So we end up getting dy over dx equals cosine of x cosine of y minus cosine of x all divided by sine of x sine of y minus sine of y. Did you guys get that? Okay, so your answer might look different. You might have cosine of x minus cosine of x cosine of y over sine of y minus sine of x sine of y if you multiply through by like a negative 1 over negative 1. It just depends on which side you got your dy over dx terms on. Okay. Good questions? I see a little confused, a couple confused looks. Okay, did you get it? Did you get that? Oh, like on the top and the bottom? Yeah, so you probably got your dy over dx's on the right side then. Yeah. Sean, did you get it? <laughs> that didn't seem like a very confident, yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. All right, and then the next one is the one that I showed you um, this morning. So the easiest thing to do in this case is to get the um, y's on one side, and before you even begin, solve for y. So even if you didn't recognize that this all was a negative 1 and you did quotient rule here, it would still be a lot easier than doing implicit differentiation. But if you have 1 minus x over x minus 1, that is negative 1. So you end up getting y is equal to negative 1. So our original function is just y equals negative 1. So then when I talk about y prime, or dy over dx, that's 0. And y double prime is 0 as well. And y double prime is this d2y over dx squared. That's what that means. Second derivative. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Let me see. Um, yeah, I think I still have a minus y. Yeah. All right. Make sense? All right. I'm going to play a game.